<laughs> you are so naive, it kills me. <laughs> I knew you were still worried about me. You're getting all worked up over nothing. I felt much turbulence in my heart. Just like that. Embrace the anger. Embrace it! He did not wish his descendants to blindly seek revenge and be deceived by things of the past. Okay, listen. These two are definitely foils of each other. And by foils, what I mean is that Kazuha and Scaramouche are perfectly contrasted to each other. They both embody polar opposite ideals, and they make choices that the other wouldn't make despite having very similar circumstances. And yeah, alright, usually foils aren't really worth dedicating an entire video to because as a literary device they are super common, but this case is a little bit different. The way Kazuha and Scaramouche counterbalance each other thematically changes everything we know about the themes of the Inazuma story chapter. And you might find this a little difficult to believe, but the Inazuma story chapter was never about eternity or transience or respecting the wishes of the people or what makes a good ruler or visions or even finding the traveler's sibling. It wasn't even about Raiden. It was always about Kazuha. And indirectly, it was about Scaramouche. And more importantly, it was about the loss of the original Electro Archon Makoto and how the people of Inazuma coped. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let's rewind for some context. We need to talk a little bit about what makes Kazuha and Scaramouche foils for a second because this is the foundation for the basis of the rest of the video. So, as far as we can tell, Kazuha is the last of the Kaidahara family line. Despite being born into a somewhat noble family, he lived the humble life of a wanderer since his family and the Yashiro commission they belonged to had had their reputation severely damaged due to the loss of their swordsmithing arts. More on that later. Despite wandering from place to place and never really settling anywhere, Kazuha was the type to form friendships wherever he went, and one of those friendships was particularly dear to him. But after the Vision Hunt decree was announced and Kazuha was forced into hiding, this friend challenged the Vision Hunters to a duel before the throne and lost, probably on purpose since his only wish was to confront the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. And Kazuha arrived just in time to watch his friend be struck down by the Shogun's blade. Distraught, he took his friend's fallen vision and fled the country only to be picked up by Beto and her pirate crew. Scaramouche actually has a similar story. As a prototype puppet that was deemed too frail by its creator to house the gnosis it was originally planned to hold, Scaramouche was supposed to sleep for an eternity. But he woke inexplicably and began to wander Inazuma in a blank and impressionable state. It was then that he met Katsuragi, an assistant to a man named Nagamasa. Katsuragi became an important existence for the impressionable Scaramouche, but when Scaramouche's true identity was discovered by Nagamasa, he was presumably told by Katsuragi to flee. Nagamasa considered this an act of betrayal on behalf of Katsuragi and cut him down with a blade he forged himself in a political and public execution. Scaramouche's reaction is unknown as of now, but he also left Inazuma shortly after and was taken in by the Fatui. That makes both Kazuha and Scaramouche young men of noble birth who grew up in very humble settings as wanderers that later had someone very dear to them killed by an important political figure's blade, which then forced them to leave the country and join questionably criminal organizations. But it's not just their backstories that are similar. They also share swordsmithing and hearts as general themes since Kazuha's family were originally swordsmiths of the Ishin or One Heart Swordsmithing School, and Scaramouche was supposed to house the Gnosis or the Heart of God and was taken in by an assistant to a swordsmith, or possibly a swordsmith himself, but we'll talk about that a little bit later too. But what makes these two different is in the way that they responded to their respective losses. Kazuha falls in with Beidou's pirate crew shortly after fleeing Inazuma, and they served as an excellent emotional support system. This, along with Kazuha's naturally easygoing nature, allowed him to grieve properly and come to terms with his friend's death, even going so far as to call it fair and justified since it was a choice his friend made on his own and not a choice forced upon him. 
In his own way, Kazuha recognizes and respects the wish of his deceased friend, which is a part of the reason why Kazuha bears no grudge against the one who killed him. Scaramouche, by contrast, fell in with the Fatui while fleeing Inazuma and consequently into a rather toxic environment. It's unlikely he had any emotional support or guidance, and as a result, his feelings of loss festered for over 300 years, eventually manifesting as a desire for revenge. Nagamasa was a swordsmith, and by Scaramouche's logic, all associated swordsmiths must also have been guilty of wronging him, so he decided to destroy each of the five swordsmithing schools, or at least four of the five. More on that later too. Therefore, Scaramouche was not able to respect Katsuragi's sacrifice, or rather, his choice to save Scaramouche from Nagamasa's wrath. Okay. I have made my point about the foils thing, but you're probably wondering why I'm even talking about it in the first place. I know it looks cool, but it's seemingly irrelevant. Except it isn't. See, when viewed together, Scaramouche and Kazuha share a theme of coping with loss. That theme can then be extended and applied to the rest of Inazuma. And yeah, the whole thing. The whole of Inazuma. Case in point, let's start with Raiden A because she's the one that kinda kickstarted all of these events in the first place. So 500 years ago, A lost her twin sister to the Cataclysm in Conria, and that experience emotionally destroyed her because not only did she lose her sister, but she had no one she could really share her grief with. Remember, A was Makoto's shadow. As far as most people were concerned, there was only one Electro Archon. How could she tell anyone that her twin sister died? Who would have believed her? I mean, granted, she did have Miko, but theoretically, Miko would have been extremely young, so perhaps A didn't even feel comfortable telling her anything yet. As for the rest of her close friends, well, they were either dead or would be very soon. So that left A without a support system, and she ultimately chose to cope with her feelings of loss through self-isolation. On a speculative note, it's possible that A made Scaramouche initially as an attempt to completely replace her and her sister as the Electro Archon so she could announce her sister's death properly by kind of faking her own, cause twins. But when that didn't work, she made a clone of herself instead and then locked her inside of it. No one would know the Electro Archon was dead if an autonomous puppet that looked like her sat in her place, right? And then. She could just meditate inside and not feel anything for hundreds of years. It's a perfect plan! <sighs> the thing is, the state of mind of any nation's leader is reflected onto their nation. In this case, an unstable Archon is not able to properly protect its country. This is kind of illustrated by the Sacred Sakura, which, as you might remember, did not exist prior to Makoto's death. This tree required A to be in a good mental state in order for it to go back in time and protect Inazuma during a time when she wasn't in a good mental state. Oh, that's confusing. But during that time, it would purify the elemental energy of Inazuma and remove toxic energy that eventually turned into tumors within its roots. These tumors, if left unchecked, would bring disasters to Inazuma, like that one time when it turned the sea black and monsters ravaged all the islands. This obviously results in unnecessary losses that are indirectly caused by A's isolation that came about because she couldn't cope with her own grief and now she's not doing her job right. It's a never-ending cycle. But we see this happen again in more recent times. Because A refused to leave her room to see what was happening outside for herself, her poorly supervised shogun puppet allowed a war to break out between Inazuma and Watatsumi while also forcing the island itself into isolation via the Sakoku Decree. And of course, there was the infamous Vision Hunt Decree that followed shortly after, which forced people to give up their visions, which in turn caused them to lose a part of themselves, again perpetuating a cycle of isolation and loss. Oh, and her first puppet woke up and became a very small, terrifying monster that does as he pleases because he was never taught anything else, which is, mm, great. So I think we've established that A can't cope with loss very well. So she isolates herself and suppresses her feelings. Logically, you'd think that the Traveler is going to be the one to come in and fix this. But then this happens. The Traveler gets their butt whooped when they challenge her alone. But on the second attempt, the only thing that really changed from the first was the presence of Kazuha. 
By blocking the Muso no Hitotachi, Kazuha creates an opening for the traveler to bring in Yae Miko, the only person who knew the Raidens were twins and can therefore relate to A on a level that others can't. Miko may have been the one to get A to come out of her room, but Kazuha was the one who provided the opportunity and the traveler was just a catalyst. Kazuha was the initial trigger for the healing process, and this is important because when you look closer, you'll realize that Kazuha has played a pivotal role throughout the entire story chapter for similar reasons. Kazuha was the first Inazuman character we met, and the first thing he does when we meet him is give us some tips to help us win our final match in the Crux Clash. Though it's Beidou that actually brings us to Inazuma, Kazuha is the one who prepares us for it by telling us everything we need to know. And later on, it's his friendship with General Goro that allowed Watatsumi to hire the Crux Pirates as extra manpower for the Resistance, helping them turn the tide of war in their favor. His additional connections with Ayato may or may not have played a role in helping the Resistance infiltrate Narukami Island so that he and the rest of the Resistance could be there in that perfect serendipitous moment when Kazuha managed to block the Muso no Hitotachi. Had that not happened, the Traveler would have been Senyorad. And that's just it. Kazuha goes out of his way to form connections, which is the opposite of what A does, and those connections create a powerful support network that's proven to be crucial in helping Inazuma overcome its most recent hardships. In that way, you might even say that Kazuha is helping people heal by teaching them how to confront their problems. That seems to be his thing. And the fact that Scaramouche is his perfect foil proves that these events were not things Mihoyo decided to include on a whim. And now that A has finally begun to heal from losing Makoto, and Inazuma is finally at peace again and not having its borders closed anymore, there's only one loose end that needs tying up. And that's Scaramouche. The only one who has not been influenced by Kazuha's presence. And wouldn't you know it, the Iridori Festival sets up a confrontation between the two quite nicely. As for how this confrontation will go, well, if it were any other character in Kazuha's place, I'd say Scaramouche would probably be the target of some well-deserved vengeance. But this is Kazuha we're talking about. His current track record suggests that he's the end of a cycle of pain rather than someone who continues it. If A's inability to cope with the loss of her sister resulted in her creating and then abandoning Scaramouche, who was, as a result, unable to cope with the loss of Katsuragi, which caused him to destroy Kazuha's family line, then Kazuha represents the end of that cycle because nothing he's done has come from a place of pain. It's come from a place of healing and acceptance. For this reason, I think in the next couple of patches, we're going to get a surprise finale to the Inazuma story chapter. I think the Traveler will track down Scaramouche for some reason, only to find Scaramouche in conflict with Child who is also tracking him down in order to retrieve the Gnosis. I expect that Child will be defeated by an out-of-control Scaramouche whose blows can only be initially countered by Kazuha in the same way that Kazuha was able to counter the Muso no Hitotachi. I expect a boss fight after this, of course, but I also expect that the whole encounter will end with Kazuha sparing Scaramouche's life. Not because he's forgiven him, mind you, but because Kazuha knows that killing him would accomplish nothing. He's already done this once before in the Inazuma prelude chapter, where he threatened to kill a thief that stole his friend's vision, thinking that it might trigger the vision's powers, but in the end, he just gives the thief some advice instead and lets him leave unscathed. And yes, the two situations are really different, but Kazuha knows that it's much more effective to let someone live and learn than it is to just kill them outright and never give them the chance. Of course, this is dependent on the recipient of said mercy being receptive to it, which is a separate thing altogether. But I do expect Kazuha to give Skaramush a very different outlook on life, one where Skaramush is forced to confront himself and his choices, which for someone like him is probably a worse punishment than death. No one really wants to live with their bad decisions and regrets, you know? And I do think Scaramouche will experience some regrets when he faces Kazuha. 
Now, in my previous video on the Iridori Festival, I speculated a little bit on what or who Niwa is and what that name meant to Scaramouche because it was important enough to get him to stop destroying swordsmithing schools. I was pretty sure it wasn't a surname for Katsuragi since Katsuragi is generally already a surname. However, two things were brought to my attention afterwards. First is that the way Katsuragi is written in Japanese is not the way it's usually written when used as a surname, which I didn't think too deeply about until a YouTube commenter by the name of Firex pointed out the following. Nagamasa is called Nagamasa-sama, or roughly Lord Nagamasa, instead of Mikoshi-sama, or Lord Mikoshi. This is important because Nagamasa is his first name and not his last name. Katsuragi was referred to in exactly the same way as Katsuragi-sama or Lord Katsuragi. It would therefore make the most sense for Katsuragi to be a first name instead of a last name in order to stay consistent with Nagamasa, especially because Nagamasa outranks Katsuragi and it would be a little bit weird to be more formal with someone of a lower rank than someone of a higher rank. Therefore, I am now convinced that the Niwa Scaramouche asks about was the surname of Katsuragi. That's enough to conclude that Niwa Katsuragi is related to Niwa Yoshinori, which was Kazuha's great-grandfather who was adopted by the Kaedaharas, making Kazuha quite literally the descendant of the only person Scaramouche cared about. It also means that Scaramouche likely never had any intention of destroying that particular branch of the ride in Gokuden. What's interesting about this potential scenario is that both the Niwa and the Kaedahara families belong to the Ishin swordsmithing school, while Scaramouche was built to house the Gnosis. While the original Electro Archon, Makoto, died in the Cataclysm, A retrieved two items from her. Her sword, the Muso Ishin, and her Gnosis. If Kazuha is from the Ishin school and Scaramouche has the Gnosis, then in a way, both of them represent the two halves of Makoto. Interestingly, Makoto's blade was never sharpened until after she died and A started using it. This is kind of a neat reference to the fact that Kazuha would rather not resort to violence unless it's absolutely necessary. And both Ishin and Gnosis, like I mentioned earlier, mean heart. Ishin means one heart or wholeheartedly, while the Gnosis is literally the heart of God in Chinese, and Scaramouche's constellation is this. A peaceful puppet holding a heart. Which says to me that Scaramouche, as angry a little vengeance gremlin as he is, will absorb some of Kazuha's infectious and peaceful mentality and become a proper vessel for the Gnosis which might make him the next actual Electro Archon for reals this time, which is a really weird thing to think about, but I think it would be a really, really cool way to close out the Inazuma story chapter by having Kazuha teach us that eternity is pointless and that learning to accept life's ever-changing transient nature is for the best and giving us the only real sensible way to uh, redeem Scaramouche without actually condoning all of the horrible shit he's done. It seems like a story of recovery and second chances, and I am much more excited about that kind of a story than I am for just like, hey, let's wipe the slate clean and get rid of their memories, and oh, hey, because they have no memories, now they've done no wrong. I, I don't like that trope. That's silly. Characters should be allowed to be problematic. That's part of what makes them interesting. Anyway, that's really all I have to say for now. This was a little bit more of a ranty style video, but that's okay. Trust me when I say I have plenty more theory and actual lore videos coming very soon, so if you want to see those, you should find that big red button and then do that little thing where you like click the mouse button. And then you'll get more quality entertainment videos in your subscription box, because that's a good thing to have in there. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ashikai. I'm signing out, and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye for now.